In this video, we're going to be talking about a concept called ISO. In digital film and video, this refers to the sensitivity of the sensor that's receiving the light for your film or video. Now, as you know, we have a picture, a digital photo or frame from a digital video, and it's made up of millions and millions of individual dots called pixels. Now each of these individual dots is sensed by a single sensor in the camera. All these together make up a big sensor that is in the back of the camera and this is kinda like the film of the camera but that sensor is actually just a whole array of really tiny sensors. And then what these do is these sense the color coming in for an individual dot and it sends it over here to a corresponding dot in the photo. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on a single one of these sensors and see what happens with it. So let's take a look at one of these sensors. Now this sensor sitting here it's going to re be receiving light and have some red light hitting it and some green light and some blue light. Now, the sensor's job is to take all this incoming light and figure out what color should be recorded for a particular dot over here in the picture, a particular pixel. Now, the way it records this is it basically looks at how much red, green, and blue there is coming into the picture. So, first we're going it's going to look at Okay, so how much red is coming in? And we're going to say, okay, maybe this much. And then it's going to take a look and see, okay, how much green is there coming in? Maybe this much. And finally, how much blue is coming in? Now these three colors together combine to make up a single color for this pixel and that's what gets recorded. Now up top here this would be considered you know the maximum amount of light it can sense. Say we'll just mark it 100%. This is 100%. Now what it's recording is how much red, how much green, and how much blue. And so for instance you know in this case you might have you know 85% red, 50% green, maybe 75% blue. Now, that's all fine. In a regular picture we're taking, we get different amounts of light. But now let's take a look at what happens when we have a picture where we don't have quite so much light. So here, we're going to take you know, same sensor, but this time when the light comes in we find there's only this much light, this much red. It's a much dimmer photo, not as much light available, only this much green. And maybe this much blue. So as you can see this graph looks relatively similar to this graph it's just that it's a lot dimmer. There's not quite as much light coming in. Now normally with this being 100% or the top of the graph here, that's going to show us a pretty dim pixel. But we can tell the camera, well don't treat this as 100%. Let's pretend that this is 100%. So say forget that. Say that this is 100% and let's treat these light levels accordingly. Now, this is getting scaled up to this. You see how that works? So now, this sensor could consider that it could brighten up the pixel by just treating the top of its sensing range as down here instead of thinking about it way up here. In a perfect world, that's all well and good because this sensor is just receiving the light and we just scale it up no big deal. Well, we don't live in a perfect world 
and these sensors are electronic and with that there are some problems that come into play. And we're going to take a look at that. It's a little bit technical but it's worth understanding why this happens. So let's say you have an electrical wire here and in this electrical wire you have a electrical signal traveling along the wire. As this signal travels it actually gives off a magnetic field around it. And this magnetic field is always there unless we put some like shielding around the wire to prevent these from you know flowing out. Well what happens if we have another wire passing right by it say right here. Well it might have its own electrical signal traveling along this wire and it's going to be giving out its own magnetic field. Well when these two cross these signals interfere with each other. This signal interferes with that one and this one interferes with that one. As a result this signal that's passing through the wire actually gets changed just a tiny amount. So how does that affect us here? Well we have this whole sensor with all these little tiny sensors on it. Well they're in a camera with lots of other electronic equipment and as you can imagine there are you know wires passing behind it, around it, near it, you know you have just lots of stuff going on in this camera. It's on a whole circuit board and everything. Well, all of that electronic activity is actually interfering with these sensors. And it kind of changes the signal that it receives a bit. So if we take a look at what happens on a completely black room with no light coming in at all, you know, let's say you have the lens cap on or, or something like that. So here you have the red, green, and blue. Because of this interference, it's actually going to make the sensor think it's sensing a little bit of red and a little bit of green and a little bit of blue. Just a tiny bit. Not a lot, but enough that you actually, the sensor actually thinks it's sensing something. And so it records it as just, you know, a little bit of color variation for this particular dot. Now, what happens when you actually have light coming in? Well, this kind of gets layered on, this, this interference or this noise. And so your, the color that it's actually recording is just a tiny, tiny bit different than it actually is because of this interference happening, causing some noise in the recording of the color. That's usually not that big of a deal. If you have plenty of light coming in, this is just a teeny tiny amount, not a big deal. But what happens when you have not so much light coming in? Well, so we have this teeny tiny amount of interference, teeny tiny amount of noise, not as big of a deal. You can see it's a little, it's kind of affecting the relative size of this because, you know, this is a little bit and this is not so high. But what happens when we scale up? Well, this tiny little bit of noise all of a sudden becomes not so tiny because we're scaling everything up, including the interference. So what you end up with is when you're scaling up the signal, the noise also scales up too. So you end up getting more noise in your picture. Now, that is actually, this is where the term ISO comes in because people have determined ratings for how much noise there is in a picture or how much you're scaling it up actually. And the higher the number, like let's say we have an ISO number of 100. Well, we're probably looking at something along the lines of this, where we're only going to see a tiny bit of noise and it's not scaled up at all. But then we go to something like 400. Well, now we're starting to scale things up and so the noise starts getting a little bit more. And so then we go to 800 or 1000. You know, now we're scaling up a lot. We might be scaling up, you know, we might be treating this as the top range and saying this is 100%. Well, that's, you can see how the noise is affected there. It's going to scale up way high. So think of it this way as the higher your ISO, the more noise you're introducing into your picture because of this interference. Now, newer cameras 
have much better sensors that are able to not pick up all this electronic noise. So they can scale up much higher and not have this noise affect the final picture. Some of the newest cameras can scale m like thousands of times up and you still won't really have much noise in the picture, which is really nice when you're having to shoot in areas where there's really not much light. In some cameras this will also be called the gain, and so you may see it referred to as gain instead of ISO, but it's really the same thing. It's just scaling up the signal to get a new signal, but in doing so you're kind of bringing this noise along with it. I hope this helps.